So a couple of recent discoveries. Number one, apparently Costco makes beer. I didn't know that was a thing. Two, yes, it's 6 a.m. I have now worked 13 days straight. It is my last day and I now have a week off. So here at six in the morning. But nonetheless, little status update here. The motherboard repair on the shuttle even after replacing all the capacitors was a complete flop. It still makes the RAM incredibly hot and has become basically hopeless. So I'm going to keep the case, maybe adapt something. Someday I might get it working again, but not that big a deal. But on to another fun project that I've been throwing together. Found this on Thingiverse as a start, but kind of kind of working with it. So I'm sure some of you have seen the experiment where you take a Raspberry Pi and turn it into an emulator with emulator station or some of the other MAME type things. Um, but I saw a really neat instructable and Thingiverse project where you take an actual Nintendo controller, well, much like this little guy, and you put a Raspberry Pi Zero into it. So, I kind of wanted to do this for a while, but the Raspberry Pi Zero has not been easy to find, and I found it from a site called, I believe, Pymori? Not quite sure. Um, I'm still waiting on delivery, but that should be the easy part. I've set up many a Raspberry Pi, and I, I can probably do that in about 20 minutes. Um, fun part was modifying this controller. Now, they obviously do make replica controllers you, uh, in USB form, but this particular project uses the GPIO pins, which nicely enough on the Raspberry Pi Zero did not come populated, so you can just solder directly to them. And in this case, because the Pi Zero and this, uh, they're, they're both you know pretty simple in terms of input, and this little guy only uses five pins. Now, I've done a few things here. Obviously, this is pretty cheap, um, and I've already kind of glued it down. Um, there were no screws holding anything in place on this. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Yes, we can. Oh, yeah, we're backwards. So I've dabbed some hot glue. I've dabbed hot glue in the wires. And then, as you can see here, we've got our main wires. So pretty much what you have in this case, come on, yeah, five wires, you've got uh, power, ground, clock, data, and one other, which I know I've written down, but I'll have to look it up one second. Okay, yeah, so if we look at the colors, ground is white. Clock is blue, latch is yellow, data is brown, and then the V plus, which I believe is on this device, 3.3 volts. Uh, might be 5. I'll have to look that up. But either way, it's fully compatible with Pi. But yep, I've already toned those out um, based on the original connector, which this did have, curiously enough. This was kind of a, a good deal. I mean, it actually came with the original NES connector, so it was compatible with the NES. And then just took the meter. Toned out uh, continuity, done, and, and not a bad deal. I mean, these are not the best controllers ever. Um, Tomi, I guess. I've never heard of this brand, but it works. Um, and for two of these, I think it was ten bucks off Amazon. Pretty good deal. <clears throat> so we've got that prepped. We've already glued this board into place so it doesn't move around too much. And actually, it helps the responsiveness. I mean, this isn't the worst controller I've ever used. These are hard plastic, not rubber like a real one. Um, but the plastic quality is okay. Uh, this D-pad's not bad. But without the glue in place and uh, with the back cover off, it's pretty darned squishy. I mean, you'd actually have this flopping around, so that's no good. But these have already been tinned. Uh, and they're ready to go into the pie whenever it gets here. Now, the custom part of this 
is this little guy. So if it's not obvious, this is 3D printed. It fits in terms of the back here and the screws fit, lines up perfectly. Um, and then on the inside, we've got holes here, I can mount to on the top, HDMI, and two uh, micro USB A's. So that just goes in there. Once it's in here, you won't have access to the SD card. But what I'm thinking is one USB is going to be power input, and then the other one, if I need to work on it, can be a network adapter. I've actually got one, but I'm fairly sure it will work with this. I promise it exists, but it disappeared into the. Yes, there it is. Just one of these cheap little guys. Uh, the kit I got from Pymori does have the USB OTG on the go cable, so it should be able to connect to this, and I think this will work for USB. So that'll get us 10100 Ethernet, which is the same as any regular Pi out. And that'll work for that. And the nice thing is, if it's not using network, what I was thinking of was getting another USB controller and then using that. So you could plug into here, daisy chain it, and then you've got a second player. Like I said, this all goes on here very nicely. And if need be, yeah, it all just snaps and screws, it's all good. Um, for a little bit of extra niceness, I actually used, uh, you can see a little shine there across the light. I actually decided to epoxy coat this 3D printed piece. It, it was a pretty good finish. And you can kind of see it didn't coat the back quite right in this spot here. I mean, it's sealed, but it didn't coat the same. I think this was a little bit different texture because the printer started from this corner and moved across, but uh, worked, worked pretty well. So um, I, I think I may put all the systems on here. I've just got a spare 16 gigabyte card here, uh, which will fit pretty much all the classic arcade games. What I may do is make this the main controller, and then if you want to play something that needs more controllers, I'll just maybe attach a Super Nintendo controller, and then you've got enough buttons for practically any modern system, but I think that'll work. But anyways, that's um, hopefully a project for this, this next week. Hopefully I can get it done in a couple hours, and um, once it's working, I'll, I'll certainly demo it. Cheers.